If we take a look on China on the map of time zones, we see that it should have 5 different time zones. But if we ask a question, what time is now, for example in Beijing and Tibet, we will get the similar answers. How does that work? Um, well, you should better ask Communist Party of China. In 1949, Mao Zedong decreed that all of China would henceforth be on Beijing time for the purposes of national unity. Yeah, that's the real reason why China has only one time zone instead of five. As we understood from the Chinese experience, time zones are much more than just time. It's more about politics and how you position yourself on the world stage. But before we continue, please put like on that video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Let's take a look on point from which we measure time. And here we go again. Politics. Everything takes place in London, in Royal Greenwich Observatory. That's the starting point of any world time calculations. And since 1972, it is the only one point of which coordinated universal time, or UTC, is based. And that all happened thanks to the British imperialism. That's how Britain became the center of the world on the map of time zones. Normally, we should have only 24 time zones, and they should be divided by meridians, which circles through the poles of a longitude that is multiple of 15 degrees. But we live in the real world, where most of countries don't care about that, and world map can truly show up this mess. Time zones became an instrument of business, economics and politics. Even if we take a look on Europe, we see that not everything is fine here with the time zones. Let's take a look from west to east. Spain. It should be in time zone UTC 0, as well as the United Kingdom and Portugal. But in 1940, Francisco Franco changed Spanish time zone to the Central European one, to be closer with Nazi Germany. But even after World War II and death of Franco, um, no one wants to change it. So if you fly from London to Madrid or Barcelona, make sure that you changed your time on your watch. Next problem is Belarus. This country is a close ally of Russian Federation, so to be in better contact with them and live in the same time with Moscow, they stick to UTC plus 3. But in fact, they should stick to the Eastern European time zone UTC plus 2, as Ukraine, Baltic countries, Finland, Romania and other countries do. Turkey. They should have two different time zones, but they decided to simplify everything, so they stick just to the UTC plus 3. And because of that, Istanbul and Moscow have the same time. Um, but you know what? European problems and troubles, when we see country that sticks just to the another one nearest time zone, that's not even a problem when we take a look on the Pacific Ocean. That's the most problematic region in question of time zones in the world. According to the international dateline concept, we should see a normal, straight line that divides world by 12 hours on each side. But it doesn't work like that. This straight line reminds me more African borders than a straight line. And some of the countries think that they are the smartest one here. You see that curved line on the east which creates a recess of 3220 km. That's because of Kiribati. If you think that we have only 24 different time zones, which are divided on 12 plus zones and 12 minus zones, you are wrong. Because thanks to this tiny country in Oceania, we've got GMT plus 13 and GMT plus 14. And yeah, this is the only one country in both of those time zones. When Kiribati was formed in 1979, they stacked with problem that western part of their country has difference in time with the main part of country of 23 hours. One day they decided to stop it and switch to the more comfort time zone, to be closer to their main business partner, Australia. In 1994 they decided to move the international dateline and because of that, 1st of January 1995 has never existed in Kiribati. But it doesn't work like Tiananmen Square. 1st of January 1995 has really never existed here because of changing of time zones. And after that decision, we see that horrible border in the middle of Pacific Ocean. 
After that, another country decided to change their time zone too. So, this is Samoa, another country in Oceania. Already sounds like a joke. In 1892, Samoa's king Malay Laupepa decided to move the time zone line eastern of the international date line to be closer with the United States and their part of Samoa Islands. But in 21st century, Samoa is closer to Australia in terms of economics and relationship rather than with the United States. But the difference in time between them was 21 hours. So in 2011, they decided to skip 30 of December and switched right to the 31st of December. Here in Samoa, 30 of December 2011 has never existed. Mind-blowing fact. At the same time, we can have three different dates on Earth. If in New York City it is Friday 6.30 am, then in American Samoa it's Thursday 11.30 pm, then in Kiribati it is 12.30 am Saturday. And the most interesting place on Earth is North Pole, because it combines all of time zones together. That is the only one place on Earth where you can choose to live in any time zone you want. At the same time, on the South Pole, well, they just use time of the New Zealand UDC plus 12. Nothing special, boring place. As well noticed, there is a lot of minuses in using time zone system that we have right now. It isn't objective, it includes other interests such as politics and economics. But on the other hand, um, we don't have any other normal system that would work. So, despite all minuses that our current system has, it isn't so bad as you can think. At least North Pole in this case is objective. Polar bears are happy because of that, they is successful.